Hello, how are you? My name is Anthony Gray. Welcome to yet another episode of Grayscale Painting. What you see in front of you is one sheet of 150 pound weight 11 by 15 inch watercolor paper. Okay, we're going to do a, a rock face waterfall scene. All right, um, I'm going to start off very simple with an extremely loose sketch coming from oh, right about here I'll make it dark and it just looks something like this and I drop off and it just continues down and it curves get straight like that there'll be a little, maybe something like here here and maybe a light little something right around in here and maybe it's a thin one coming here maybe the trees are going to be very low they'll be like all around here the reason why i got the trees low like this is because it will uh, uh, give you the semblance of scale that these waterfalls are really really up there okay and since i'm gonna have a waterfall here Let's do a little correction right there. Let's, let's, let's give him a little peek here. Then it comes down like that. Like that. All right. Uh, we're going to do the same thing with this little bit here. We, we give him part of a peek and then come down. Get rid of that part. And we'll just kind of do something like that. Okay. All right. That's about the uh, end of that sketch. Okay. Uh, let's switch the camera primary yellow titanium white uh, Grumbacher red phthalo blue and we got some uh, um, burnt umber all right so let's switch back up here again now by the time we're up here again you probably got a flash of what the actual painting ended up looking like okay all right okay now i'm going to uh dip in as usual into my vegetable glycerin which is just a medium that i use for heavy body acrylic paints is to keep the paint wet um you can move it around and uh, blend easier with it um keeps the uh, acrylic paint um a little more lucid for a little longer time than normal okay acrylic paint dries rather quickly a little a very little bit of this stuff goes a long way you only need a very thin amount and that's all i need and more than likely it'd be the only time i would really use this unless i use it for a glaze so i'm gonna just coat the top half here just like so no more no less than this i did not pre-treat this uh watercolor paper at all all right uh i usually wood depending on the time i i have if you did pre-treat the paper it, it will more than like, likely not bow out on you in and all of that okay i'm just wiping off the glisten on the towel that i have on my lap and once again i'll just go over it with the dry brush just like so i don't need too much of this stuff on it I wipe like i can wipe a bit off of it okay i'm going to use brushes that are conducive to the size of the paper since it's 11 by 7 11 by 15 inch paper i'm going to use slightly smaller brushes it gives me a little more control okay in doing what i uh, need to do and we're going to work with the sky all right but right now i'm just going to give an overall color uh to the sky at first so we're going to build the sky in kind of like layers all right so i'm going to do a little more with the clouds on this painting than I normally would. I'm gonna get a little bit of titanium white. Look down here. All right, a little bit of titanium white on the corner right there. All right, this is like a regular two inch flat brush that I use, my little go-to brush. And I'm gonna put that white down on the bottom here, just like that. And that's about all I need. Of course, you don't see it, but it is there. I am going to use a little bit of this very dark blue i'm gonna go up in the corners up here and i'll just kind of 
put it in there like so. Just a cross motion. It's gonna mix with that white as I go further down. Okay, mix in with that white down there, just like that. Just like so, okay. Like I said, I'm gonna deal with the clouds a little, a little more today. All right. I will be going probably back to this brush a little bit later, but not, not right now. I'm going to take a, it's just a mop. Um, it's actually a makeup brush, but it's essentially a mop brush. I'm going to smooth all of this out. I'm going to go from the light out. And basically what I'm doing right now is just taking out the streaks. That's all. No streak lines. Make it very smooth. Okay. I'm going very lightly with this. Brush and circular motions. Now, as it dries, as the glycerin dries, let me be, be uh, specific here, the paint will thin out naturally. You follow me? Little egg strokes here. Just want to mainly try to get this as not, not too much variation in it really that's all now the paint's still very pliable all right so i'm going to take i'll take this little fella right here a little bit of titanium white on the tip just right in here because i just still want this to be a little bit lighter up in here just like that i'll just pounce it in there a little bit i just want it to lighten up a tad still keep the blue but i just gradually wanted a little lighter here on the bottom end and once again very lightly just kind of marry those two colors together very gentle blend right up in there okay look down here at the palette let's get a little bit of this nice dark umber Let's put it right here. All right. Let's get the smallest amount of blue. We're gonna put it right there. Mix the blue and the brown together. Now that's a little, a little too blue for my taste. Let's get a little touch of, of the brown. Put it in there. Just like that, and even it out there. All right. We're gonna get some of that titanium white. A little bit of titanium white. Put it in there. That's cool. And what you want is kind of a, a, a weird blue gray in there. We're going to work on some cloud bottoms. All right. And we're going to work it this way. We're going to kind of get some smaller ones here. Well, we'll do it like right around in here like this. And I'm just concentrating on the, the cloud bottoms. Pretty thin like that. We get a little airy like this. And we'll get some smaller one right here like that. Now they're going to get bigger. Let's go here. We get a, a wider one right here, just like this. Bulk it out there a little bit. But still going pretty much straight across like this. Kind of make it uneven like that. I got room for another one. We got room for one more. So get a little touch of brown, a small touch of brown like that. Mix it in with that blue a little. And we'll, we'll pop one right here. Nice thick one here in the corner, just like this. And we'll have it kind of cover most of this, just like that. Keep it kind of flat, like that. Just like so, all right? So to get smaller, a little longer, a little larger, all right? Keep it just like that. Don't really do any major changes to it. Now, I'm going to take some white, titanium white, put it right there in that, that blue gray. Let's get some more titanium white, put it right in there. It's going to tint the white anyway. All right, and that's kind of what I want, a little bluish tint to this white. But compared to what you got here, it's going to appear white. All right, and we're going to just pop in some nice little, little cloud shapes in there, just like, like so. 
like that. Do the same thing here. Pop them in there. All little interesting little little shapes here. Just like that. Okay. We're gonna do the same thing, get a little more white. We're gonna mix it right in there with that bluish color. We're gonna tint that a little bit there. We're gonna come up here and we're just gonna kinda get some stuff happening here like this. All up on top there. Just like that. Come on down in here. Add some of that love in here, just like that. Okay. Just like so. Now that fell on the top there, on the corner. We'll put a little bit of some, maybe a little touch there, but some here and maybe a little bit of a little bit of something up around in there. Not really anything too special. Alright. I'm cleaning off the brush. Let's get a tiny thin small um little my brush like that. I can you get one actually smaller, but we're gonna marry that bottom part into that darker gray in there. See this? Just kind of blend it in there. Blend it right in and don't be afraid to move it around. Kind of make these airy up here, float them around in different directions. Get some nice little cloud movements, but all up in here. You can smooth out some of that gray in there. See that? Just like so. All right. We can come here and do a little bit of that in here up on top. Kind of move some of that gray around a little bit. Smooth it out. Come up here. Do the same thing. This is where a smaller brush would benefit. But I don't, I don't really need to really emphasize all of that. Not right now. Okay, we're gonna go back into our brown. We're gonna build up that darker bottom there. Right in here, a little bit of brown, a little bit of blue. Put it in there, stir it around. A little more brown. Get some white, put it in there. I want my, I like my cloud bottoms to have a little more brown in them. You can uh, do it in varying degrees of whatever moves you, whatever you would like. Okay, and once again, I'll just tap in some of that nice, especially here in this corner. It's kind of, even though it's up here in the corner, it's, it's, it's closest to us. Just like so. Really put it up in there like that. I'm going to take that soft brush and smooth it all out and marry it right in there. Kind of stir it around a little bit. Just like so. Put it right up in there. Okay. We're going to continue with some of that nice, deeper color. Put this fella right up in here. Come on, up in there like that. Just darken up the spots there. Keep it fairly, fairly deep all up in here. Come around across like that. I don't necessarily have to add that to this one. That. And once again, just marry it into that that white color up in there, just like this. See how you get the build? It's like um, I don't know, like writing a movie script. You kind of build in the suspense there. Whatever analogy works for you. Okay. The darker you make it, the more ominous it starts to look. Okay. Up in here, you can kind of soften this up a little bit. Just like so. Up in here, soften it. Bring it in there like that. All right. You do it piece by piece. It's how you build your texture. This is how you build I'm going to get a little bit of white here as I'm talking to you. It's how you start building up texture. You start building up your cloud highlights. I'm just using pure white right now. Just like this. Just like, come on up here like that. See that? Bring it in there. Up in here. 
put some of that up in there like that. Okay, I'm just wiping off the brush. And I'm gonna use the, the right bottom of the brush and go in little circles and marry all of that nice loveliness in there like that. See that? See this? Soften some of those up. Same thing here, circular motions. Marry it right in there. Like so. We're gonna do the same thing. We go get on the corner of this brush and we continue some of that loveliness. Oh, yeah, we'll do it up in here like this. Put it up in there like that. I don't wanna cover everything, just like that, all right? I'm gonna wipe off my brush and let's just start marrying that bottom edge there. See how it blends in with that gray, okay? I'm only using the very tail end, just like that. You keep it like that, all right? Once again, a couple of hairs of white, all you need. Um, let's, put, let's put some of that here, like that. So you get different parts of sunlight hitting in different areas there. Okay, and then once again, you take that little bit of white and you stir it in there. See, now it looks like little bits of sun is hitting on certain spots of the clouds, some are not. Okay. Everything's gradual. Everything's a certain, you know, put some down in there. Certain amounts of white here and there. Just like that. See this? There we go. Just like that. Let's take a little bit of white. Get some residual stuff down in here. Like like so. There we go. So you got a little bit of residual light coming down on the bottom there. Just like that. I can smooth it out with the Remember I had the other brush? Ah, I bet you forgot, huh? Hey, just kind of see that. All right. And a couple of dots of white. Well, kind of pop those in there like that a little bit. And we're going to do that again. Just to brighten it up a little bit there. See? You take it. You don't necessarily want it on the, on the, on the direct bottom. Just like that. All right. Okay. There we go. Just like so. So some interesting looking shapes and things going on up there. All right. Okay, I think I'm done messing around with all of that right now. Okay, pretty cool. Clean off the brush here. Clean off the other brush. I got a smaller water jar up here for the softer brush. Wipe off the residual stuff on the towel. Now this is a synthetic brush and um, it's going to get, get stained, but basically it's, you know, it's all right. Same thing with the brush. Okay. Let's put this guy back. Let's put this guy back over here. All right. Let us get a wider flat brush. I guess I'll use this long handle guy. This is a number 10 bright. Okay. Why, we, why is it a bright? Well, look at the corner. See the kind of bent in there on the on the edges there? It's a bright. A flat brush would have sharper corners, like a, a rectangle. Okay. All right. So let's take this fellow. Let's have a little little fun. Let's get into our umber. Uh, umber to me, for me, makes a great uh, rock color. Umber, a little bit of phthalo blue together. All right. Let's get into some titanium white and we're going to light that up a little bit. Now, this is 
according to your taste. I want a little more brown in my in my blue, so I'll get a little more of this umber. Kind of deepen a nice deeper rock color. So I want a little more brown in my phthalo blue. Then I'll throw some titanium white in there. We're gonna get it to lighten it up a little bit. I'll just keep stirring it till I get the color that I would like and to me it's just much more brown I need actually more brown than uh, blue so I'm really putting in that brown there just like that okay then I'll add my little white and start to get that kind of rock color I'm looking for just like that I use very small color palette just for this reason so you can achieve the similar colors yourself if that's what you would like to do all right that's, that's cool that'll work okay we'll start fleshing out the rocks all right let's pull the camera back a wee bit and let's bring that up we're not doing much more with the with the clouds there all right and here we go. We're gonna do a clouds a section at a time. We'll just do it from from right here right now. And right now, I'll just get the general shape. And this is just me, basically, blocking in what I want for the for the uh, the rock face. I'm just blocking it in right now. The waterfall will be right here. The edge of the waterfall will be right around there. Go all the way down. Okay. Let's bring this up. So you guys see direct bottom there. Okay, and basically you just block all this in. Block it right in. Doesn't have to be perfectly um, put in there. Matter of fact, as I'm doing this, I'm gonna add different, probably different tones, different colors in there. I'm adding just pure brown right now. See this? Mix it right in there. Different colors to the rock face there. Color red in there. I already know where the trees are going to be. I know the general height the trees will be. So none of that really matters. Just block in. Block in this color. Put it right in there. And this is no glycerin or anything like that. It's just all paint because I want the paint to dry. Follow me. There. Alright. That's one. Remember waterfalls like right here. Okay. We got the center rock right here. All right. So more of the same color. I'm going to add just a little touch of white. I'm going to lighten up that center rock a little bit. Okay. Here we go. Right here. If anything, you really want that edge to be sh sharp. Okay, here's, this is all rock face right here. We're going to end up coming back to that rock face a little bit later. Because of the water. But you'll, you'll see as I do this. I want that edge to be kind of tight there. Here's the other waterfall right in here. This is all the waterfall right here. That's the edge of the waterfall in there. Okay. All this will be solid color. Different variations and tones of color. You guys can do this. Oh, uh, let's, let's pop in a little bit of blue up in here like that. Just slap it in there like this. Then I'll just get a little bit of the brown. I'm on the brush, put it in top, on top of that blue. Just like that. Remember, this is just base color. I'm having a little, little fun with it. Let's get a little bit of brown on this brush. Come up down here like that with it. Come in here, just like that. I'm filling in spots and interesting color patterns there right now for right now. Just like so, okay? Just like that. That's rock face number two. Of course, rock face number three. Let's 
pull back a tad. I think we got everything. Let's pull up a little bit there. All right. Once again, we're going into our brown because I ran out of color. Down here, a little bit of blue, a little bit of brown. A little bit of more of that nice dark umber there. No water, all paint. Right here, he's pretty close to us here, right there. And once again, this is the uh, all our rock face here. Keep that kind of sharp there. Not necessarily the most even thing in the world, right there. And we're gonna start to block all of this in too. Block it in there. As you see, I'm not doing the most perfect color for it because this is rocks. The craggier you make it, the better it will turn out, trust me. Put a little bit of umber in there. Just like that. I don't want uh, really to put no water in it. I want this to dry as I'm doing it. All right, I'm adding a little bit of blue into what color mix I do have left here, which isn't much. Put it right in there. All right. All right, so as you see, we got all that loveliness done. Okay. We're gonna get some purple for the water. So a little bit of that dark blue, a little bit of red, get some nice maroon going, get a little touch of white in there. That's a little touch more red there. There we go, something like so. And a little bit of uh, white. Now, I'm going to add a little water to it. Loosen up this paint. And we're gonna, just going to paint in the deeper. This is just deeper water. Water is touching the rock there. Right up in here. And I'm just going to block in where I want the water to be. Anything um, that I want at the frothiness of the water that comes later, we'll, we'll put that on um, another way. So this is just a deep underbelly of the water. The water is kind of close to the rocks. And we'll just block it right in. Just like that, just block it. It doesn't have to be perfect, but much like that. I'm using a half inch flat for this. Get that maroon going, get a little titanium white, brighten it up. Nice little shade of this color. Let's get a little bit of water, loosen up that paint just a tad there. And we're blocking the other one. Uh, the water will be somewhere right up around in here like that. And we just block it right in. it in pretty good there. Out of edge of the water here. Just like that. So we've got some nice cascading water coming down a little, a little bit later on. Alright. Just like that. Um acrylic paintings when you put them together they usually got a ugly stage, a little disturbing stage there. And this is definitely no exception. So don't be put off, don't be discouraged um, by what you see, if you would like to try this, okay? All right, time for the fun part, sweetheart. Let's take a, I'll just take a large palette knife. Come down here, look at me. Let's uh, scoop up 
what we got that's loose here. Mainly the darker colors that we did for the rocks. Then I added purple. Okay. I'll just put it here flat like that. Let's get a little bit of yellow. I'm going to mix yellow in there. It's going to turn it kind of greenish, weird kind of color there. It's like that. All right. See, it's got that weird greeny color to it. All right. I have much brown left. I'm going to have to put some more brown in here. But we're going to get some brown and put it in on top of that, that green. So let's uh, bust out with some more of that umber. It's like so. I'm just mixing it. Mix it in there pretty good. So I got the umber, purple. Yellow is in here. Okay, watch this. A little titanium white. odd looking kind of um, funky kind of greeny um, color to this adding more yellow will turn it more green but slap red in there to neutralize that it will start turning brownish gray again as you see, I added some of that color. You keep mixing it. You see the color starting to change with every every bit of uh, blending. See this? See how it blends? Okay. Changes the whole thing. Look at that. All right. Now, add white to it. It will get that rocky gray color. See that? See what you got? See this? That's what you're kind of looking for. Just a little bit of titanium white does that to this mix. There you go. All right. I'm trying to get much of it off of my palette knife as possible. We're gonna do it this way first. We're gonna get some of this color. It's nice color, and we'll just start. We're gonna start uh, doing our base color with this. Well, we got our base color, it's our secondary color. Flat. Using the edge of this brush, we're not gonna get rid of everything, but now we're gonna start adding in. Just like so. And almost, it's almost like scumbling. But we're gonna get some interesting rock textures going. Not going to get rid of the other color, not totally. But basically, I'm building up some interesting textures for our preceding colors to grab onto while we're doing this. You'll see. Just like that. Let's get some more of that nice color. We're going to coat that brush, side of the brush with it, but I'm gonna coat both sides. Okay, remember, that's your water. Right up in here. Put that color in there, like this. And I am just, see, we're not getting rid of that, the, 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 the uh, overall color of it, but we are gonna coat it, coat the, the uh, rock with the, the base, pretty much the natural color of the rock, of what I'm choosing for it. I'm not, I'm not uh, covering everything. There you go. Now remember, every time, even as thin as it is, every time you put a layer on, we put the texture on this rock. Yes. Um, what's going to happen is that the paint's going to pick up on that. And it's going to make the texture off of what you leave behind previously. Okay. Okay. 
So there is a method to my madness in doing these. You can go in different directions if you want. I just choosing to do up and down. One is for the sake of time. The technique is the same. Whatever direction you want to go, that's also fine. I'm still using the side of the brush. And if you haven't noticed, I'm using the darker mix of that of that color, the brown, red, the blue, and the white, with mixing with yellow. I don't that like that. Mix it right in. Okay. I need it a little bit brighter. This is just my taste, a little, a little brighter. So I'll just a touch more titanium white. Put it right in there. Okay, all right, so now we'll start putting um, a little texture on these rocks. So we got our lighter color here, and we're gonna start to get a little swipe of paint. I'll put it right here on the bottom. And we're just going to start uh, texturing these guys. Very lightly, see that? All right. And if you want them to be in that direction, that's fine. Or you want them to slide over. It's up to you and how you want to make the patterns for your for your rocks. Make them very interesting. Okay. Let the paint work for you. Okay. here just like so we'll come up around here on this edge here now I have like I say this uh, watercolor paper it kind of got its own texture going on with it all right Some of these will get joined, like so. Coming up around in here, like so. It's like that. And that's basically it. Every little bit of texture I got. Now the watercolor paper has its own texture. I'm gonna take in this paint. Look down here. I take it out, spread it out pretty thin. Wipe across, it's like that. You build your textures right from there. But see, it the te the texture that's on the palette knife is being picked up by the texture that's on the paper itself. So it's breaking apart, separating, doing this thing. And you just, all you gotta do really just guide where you would like it to go. In whatever pattern, whatever shape you want it to be in. Okay, a thin line of, of paint works the best doing it. Okay, we're not really done yet as I'm doing this. There we go. You said you can get all sorts of interesting patterns. I'm smoothing a lot of the hard edges out here and there. Not not necessarily everywhere. Okay. Now, as you see, we did run out of color, which is um, absolutely fine. That's okay. I'll show you how to mix some more. All right. We got a little bit of umber. out of uh, titanium white hold on I would rather have a project where I run out of colors and have to add them on than to have a bunch of colors and they're not I put a little dot of that right there so we'll mix up 
mix a bit of this together. Pop in just a touch of red in that. As you can see with every swipe of the palette knife it mixes more and more. See that? So it's not difficult to bring that color back. Well, it depends on how much of it and what color you're looking for the most um, in it. Okay, now I can make that a little bit deeper or a little more red um, if desired. Alright, and I don't feel I need to really do that. This is definitely a brighter color. Alright, so I'll make it a little darker for right now, just a little bit. We'll mess with this color right here down below before we go to the other colors. Other colors um, will brighten the rocks. So I don't need that right now. I'll deepen this one. Right up in here. Okay. And a very thin line across. And we start continuing on with this fellow. This like so. You can go in the other direction. Wipe across. I just want nice interesting patterns going here and there. You can go round, square, circle, whatever you would your heart's desire. Just like that. Remember a nice thin line of paint. I got some on the brush here. So what I'll do, I'll just go flat and just add that right in there like that. Come on around like this. Come up here in this direction like that. See that? Just like so. And that's how you get rid of a lot of your paint and still have some to save and play with. Now this paint I'm using right now, uh, it's properties, this is not the super thick paint that I'm accustomed uh, uh, using. Okay, so I have to adjust. Because it's thinner paint, I have to press a little harder into the texture to get the type of look that I'm looking for. If I wanted it to be the thick paint that I'm accustomed to using, all I could have did was add um, a little modeling paste to it. Which will give you incredible texture. Texture like you wouldn't believe. Really up to you. I can probably show you an example of that if I choose to go that route. But once again. There. Right in here. Just like that. Right on the edge there. Just like so. Alright. Okay. Let's take what we got here. which is plenty right now. I'll put it right here. Um, let's get a little more white. Let's brighten it up a little bit. Now the brighter you go with your color, the less of it you need. So be aware of that, be mindful of that. I'm going to use a little bit of modeling paste on this, the bright color, just for textures sake. And I'm kind of used to the uh, I'm used to the texture. So I'm taking a little bit of golden. I'll show you to you here. This stuff right here. Modeling paste. I'm only going to take the slight little bit of it. You don't need too much. I'll take a little bit. I'll put it right in here. Just like that. Right there. You see it right here. Okay. So I will seal up this stuff. Also with modeling paste. It depends on how thick you want it. A little bit of this stuff goes a long way also. And you mix it right into your paint. Okay. One, it gives your paint volume and it does thicken up your paint, as you can see. See this? And you're still gonna have a um you're still gonna have your pretty much a, a fairly quick drying time, even if you did use the modeling paste. Alright, and basically I'm just using this just for plain body and texture. Okay. If you can hear me scraping, that's because there's a little bit of grit in that modeling paste. So you didn't hear the nice scrape along when I was mixing it, but you hear it now. Okay, 
And I'll take this and I'll thin it right out, thin it out, thin it out, thin it out, thin it out. Thin out a lot of this, just thin it right out. Thin it right out there. Now that's definitely a brighter color. Nice little swipe across, it's brighter. Okay, and this will give you nothing but texture. Now, wherever your light source is, if you look up at the clouds, the light source is kind of coming from the upper right. So it's coming pretty much from this direction. And yeah, very lightly, I'll just aim all this texture. Now the paper that I have is starting to bow, but that's fine. But as you can see, very light, very light. I just make my textures come from the upper, from the upper right a little bit, just like this. Look, you pick and choose where you would like your highlights to come. A little swipe across, very delicate. And you just flatten out your, your knife. See this? See what we're getting here? What's being picked up is the paint from the previous, there we go. Let's put that up there like that. It's the previous appliances of paint. That's what's being picked up. Okay, you follow me? Get a little, let's get a little trail of something right here. It's a little, little touch like that. And we just continue on. Just like that. And we get a flat spot here where the sun's hitting. Just like so. So I'm hoping what I'm doing right now is just showing you how to uh, get those little light sources there. Okay. And be very, very light with it. You need those, uh, those little bits of texture there. Brush some of that upward there. Kill some of the square hard edges. I don't want the edges to be super, super hard there. I think that should be fine for that one. Take my little, my paste here. Flatten it out, just like that. One swipe across, looks like that little roll on your, on your pellet knife there. Let's go to the next one. Right up in here. Just like that, very light touch. See this? Get another swipe across. Be very light with it. You be with, and the more you do it, the more practice you have with it, you get to tell. Comes down straight like that. You can curve it a little bit. Just like that. See that? All right. And let's do this one from right here. Very light touch. Just like that. And we'll continue to go that downward trend. So it's like that. Come on around like this. Meet that one in there like that. Keep that nice dark brown there. You'll get to see it. You'll pick and choose. You get to see your spots where you can add some of this. Like I say, let the, let the uh, palette knife do the work for you. Okay. And we'll pop in a few of these lovely things right up around in here. Just like that. Come up around in here. Look at that. There's very many ways you can texture your rocks. There's many ways you can do it. It's all according to your taste and what you want to represent as rocks. Okay. Yeah, right like that. There. Now remember, if it, it appears to be a little bit too bright for you or whatnot, just remember that this color does flatten out in a few minutes. So, okay. We're going towards the mountain that's closest to us now. Well, if you give my hat right up in the side there, just like that. Just keep adding, keep adding like 
that. I'm going in a semicircular motion. All right. Right up in here. Oh, a little bit right there on the side. All right, right up in here. The ledge going right up in there like that. There you go. And all right, right up in a little bit of that, right up in there, just like that. All right, and that's that. Let's get to the water. Let's take a smaller flat brush. Um, I'll take this one here, it's right here beside me. It's a number six. All right, this will also be a uh, sacrifice. Let's get into a little bit of titanium white. Let's put the white right here. A slight touch of blue. Just like that. Just like so. And we might even add a little bit of, a little bit of brown with red up a little bit like that. So it's not super bright. Once again, we're going to work with the side of the brush. You're not going to cover up all the purple. Don't do that. But we're going to just start getting, getting some, just like so. I'm not covering everything, but you know everything's in a downward motion with water. Especially down toward the bottom where it gets a little misty and, and all of that, but we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. Look at that. Just like so. Don't get rid of all that purple. Okay. Let's get some more of this gray doubt blue here. This is stalo blue with a little bit of uh, um, raw umber in it. And once again, right here, you got to go with that path of that water, like that. It's that curve you, you're looking for, maintain the curve. And don't get rid of all the purple. like so all right let's go into our titanium white for a split second here a little titanium white it's not total white as you can see but I'm gonna make this blue very bright not not totally uh, white usually at this stage I would use a uh, um, fan brush but not today all right we're gonna go with this and we're gonna just press get that nice little trail just like that go straight down straight down. We're going to mist some of that edge there, especially around in here. Straight down. Just like so. We're going to bring some of that same joy here on the other side. I don't know, it just seems like it's not there right now. You know, the bike is, um, 
I am quiet. I'm just looking, studying, thinking. But if you notice, all the colors are represented in that. Okay. Now, we're going to take this very same brush. Nothing but pure titanium white now. Let's get some highlights going. Very light, very airy, very light. Keep the curve, very important. Cascading strong water going down in there. A little bit of mist coming down here. A little touch of titanium white a little more just pure white I'm just pushing it on the tip of my brush here Here we can do the same thing. Keep in mind the path of the water. I've been very quiet in doing this because um, I'm just looking at it, examining it. Okay, now I'm going to add some um, texture of rock faces in this. I'm taking a little bit of titanium white, a little bit of the brown, a slight touch of blue, just to darken it a little bit. All right, what I'm going to do with this is I'm just going to kind of make some outcrops in here just like that. See that? Come out here. Let's put some outcrops of rock in there. See how that goes? And we're going to 
take this just like that and um, it gives a little bit of depth in your waterfall when you do stuff like this kind of bring it in like that and then you just highlight it it's a very simple way to let's just put one out here like that see that don't need really too many of them um, I'm just getting a little bit of blue and black or blue brown mix here and we'll get that out there like that and then we'll kind of come back in with it see that something like that in there and we're gonna highlight those okay and it's basically what we're what we're doing here is just adding like a little more interest into the the rock face itself like so all right I kind of like that color so I'm gonna use a little bit of water I'm gonna put it in there and make a nice little shadow color and the water is going to turn this paint more kind of a, a kind of a glaze type of thing and then we'll start like deepening little crevices in the rock itself like this see that just we're gonna, it's going to get it darker in certain areas and that adds just more texture to the rock more depth and definition into your rock face look it is just a watery glaze you're not really covering every single thing Okay, but as you see, it kind of gives a little bit of shadow, a little bit of depth. Some it makes some of those rocks recede into the color a little more. All right, the glazing part was always pretty interesting and pretty fun to me. Oh, just for that purpose, make your shadow color. Add a little water. You can even add a little medium to it if you would like. I just want the shadow color because I want it to recede uh, uh, rather quickly. Okay, I remember the light's kind of coming from the opposite side anyway, but this is down below. So I would add the shadows in, in here, like this. See, all up in there. So I'll make the, the waterfall from the right side glow a little bit more and recede the other stuff a little bit. Okay, just like, just like so. And I'll add some of that to the rocks over in here. Like in here, we can have it a little bit deeper in here like this. See this? Look. See how you could just make deep crevices in there? You just pick and choose where you want that darkness to be. Up in, uh, right up in here. I'll, like I said, I'll choose it maybe a little more toward the middle there. Doesn't take too much take much okay let's add a little bit I'm gonna use the flat brush and remember I still got some of this paint here with the uh, the paste on it there and we'll add a few bits of texture to that outcrop there just like that like that come up in here add a little bit of that there kind of joins everything together I don't need too much of this just a few bits just like that I'm using the flat of the brush add a little bit of texture just a little bit I don't have to add too much up in here a little bit Let's be edited out anyway all right now that we've did a whole mess of this okay we're just about at the end mist you can't have waterfall without mist you gotta have a little mist let's come down here okay this is dry we don't, we don't have to mess around with anything all right, it's all dry. 
Let's go with a little bit of just titanium white. I'm using a uh, makeup brush for this. Okay. I will add the smallest amount of blue in the world to it. Now that I got it tinted blue, we use more white. Brighten it up a little bit. Titanium white. Brighten it up. Okay. What I'm going to do is send the bristles here. A little more white. Okay, Add a little more white there than that. And there we go. It's tinted with blue, but I'll need it more white. Nice little dance of color doing it this way. Now, if you look here at the brush, I'll put it in the bigger screen. It's got the white in it, right? You have to be careful with it. I got it saturated pretty good with white. I'm going to put it on my towel, get most of that off of there. Okay, I'm going to go here from the bottom and lightly. See, you see here, look on the tape. You're going to have to kind of play with your, play with it there. Okay. And as I go onto the paper itself, circular motions. All right. You see, you see the white starting to come off. Do it in a very, very misty like fashion if you can. Okay. Because you still want to see some of that waterfall. You still want to see some of those rocks. Very misty, very airy. As it dries, um, once again, the color will recede. Okay. I did not want this to be stark, super white. That won't be necessary. I am building up color. Okay. Don't rush it. More of a scumble than anything. This is why the use of a soft brush. Okay. Go back into that white area again. You're just scumbling colors. Just like so. Going into the fall itself. Come on out. Some goes outward. Try to make a little, little path, a little pattern. Just like that. Bring it on in. You want the mist to be seen, but you also don't want it to obscure every little thing. Okay. All right. I'm just getting some more. Definitely like a lot like um, dry brushing. Have it come on up as far as you feel you want it to come up anyway. Get a little touch of white. And maybe, maybe get a heavier one. And it comes across the falls a little bit. Get a nice thicker one that comes kind of across there like that something trailing across there like that little directional wind blowing thing there now I'm just using more of the thicker white to do this stuff okay uh, maybe even like a slight misty cloudy looking thing come across right here going horizontal got to go horizontal against everything so it gives a little path of going across something large just across definitely directly um, definitely white going across little path right. you can definitely see it so you got one going across here you got one going across here all right okay now what will make this even appear um, that this waterfall is absolutely taller or immense is um, the trees the trees are the final final part of this 
I'm going to do the trees in the way that I've done in the previous painting because I enjoy doing them that way. Um, and it will work for this style painting. I'm getting some blue. I'm getting some red. That's a lot of red compared to that blue, but that's all right. It will be just a deep medium. A deep maroon, rather. Deep medium. There. This will work, actually. I'll get a little water. I'll loosen up the paint just a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. I got plenty of it. It's super dark, and I kind of like that. So maybe we lucked out. Maybe we lucked out. Okay. This little thin brush. This brown brush. It's a number... Uh, what are you? Number what? Six. <coughs> let's, uh, let's zoom in a little bit down here in the bottom. We're at the last spot, last, last point here. All right. Then we got that little up crop of rock right there, which I kind of like. These trees aren't going to be very tall. But we'll put one right here. Now. I'm just using the tip of the brush. My brush will be kind of the, the middle of the trees are kind of thick going out outward. They kind of flare. Okay, so you will kind of see how these guys will be built. Remember, I'm using brushes conducive to the side of the painting there. And these guys uh, will be staggered. Here and there, differences in height, but I'm gonna purposely put these rather these trees rather close to each other. Okay, you'll you'll see in a second here exactly what I'm talking about. There will be differences in height. They will be flared out toward the edges like that oh let's put a, a small one right there but I need you to pay attention to how I'm doing these the closer they are together the better they actually look even though they're smaller trees and there will be in dif differences in height and such um, we'll put a kind of lengthy one right up in here just like this Just like that. I need more water. I can feel the paint getting a little stiffer. All right, I'm using the tip of the brush. And if you notice, I'm kind of flaring them out on each side. They don't necessarily have to be even. Okay. Getting a little bigger and bigger as we go downward. Okay, if you feel that the trees are getting a little light just get more more go more into the thicker paint just like that but I need you to look at what's going on with them all right do you see now the overall look you have to look at them as a, as a total okay one they're very close you follow me I'll put one with a little bit of height there too they're closer with this type of trees, make them closer. It takes It takes more time to, um, to paint them this way. But look at the total look of them. They do look more like wilderness trees. They're not the uh, fan brush Z trees that are commonly um, been popularized by Mr. Ross. That doesn't mean that his version is the wrong version but this is just a different a different technique for a different look of uh, pine trees so you know maybe this look will work for you maybe it won't but at least I'll show you and you can give it a try and see if it works for you um, for your style of painting okay now I'm going to be very strategic in some of these and because um, I do like some of the outcropping of the rocks so I won't make them too tall. I'll make a tree that's a little bit crooked. He, he's a little on the sideways there. Pattern. Okay, so now I, I can have one a little, a little, um, a little taller. Uh, we'll, we'll put them halfway like this. There we go. 
I'll wisp to the left, I'll wisp to the right. Just like that. See this? Just like that. You put a little gap in them if you would like. Up to you. And then you can put a little filler right here. Just like that. Kind of put a couple of little tiny ones in there. Up to you. I'll put one up way up here. Now, I got one up here. That doesn't necessarily mean that outcrop of rock right there will be hidden. It's just he's a taller tree. He could be just a leader tree. Just like that. Go right past that outcropping of rock. See that? Have fun with this thing. He can make them a little larger. He's a bigger tree. He can spread them out a little bit more. Just like that. See that? Spread them on out there. Make them, make them king size. You make them tall, but you don't have to make them really girthy. All right, everything's in relation to each other. So he's uh, he's, he's he's quite a large tree to begin with. That one. So in sheer height and scale, remember the mountain is absolutely massive. All right, so these trees are immense. It's just they're not as big as those rocks in the back back there. Okay. But as you keep them relatively closely packed together, the trees, all right, it will give them more of a foresty look. And as you see me doing them, these fellas, you still see some of that fog work behind the trees there. All right. Keep going with it. One not as tall. Right about here. Go to the left, go to the right. Go to the left, go to the right. Keep the middle kind of solid. Go to the left. You will get the hang of this. We got a giant here. He's got to go past that fog bank. I'm really emphasizing the left and right strokes on these. Another one right here, right beside him, a little partner there. He's going to be off the page, but that's okay. That's all right. Put a nice little, little gap in there. Okay. So I'm looking at it here, checking things out. All right. So this is um, what we have so far. Um, as I'm yakking to you, I'm going to sign my name on it. I think I got a little bit of white left somewhere in here. Or white, off-white or something. And you know, I put my name over here in the corner somewhere. I do appreciate you guys watching uh, my tutorials. I do appreciate it. There's many other artists that are doing the same thing and some a lot more experienced than I am and 
I appreciate you spending your time with me on this already the August at the time I'm making this anyway I don't think nobody can really tell that's an 8 there I don't have nothing really bright enough for that I'll do that again there we go eh, good enough that'll work all right, let's whack a frame on it. Let's see what she looks like with a frame. Oh, we'll put her right there. That's what she's, uh, well, we'll put it right about there. It really gives a different look once you slap a frame to it. As you can see, the trees aren't necessarily looking like they're connected, but everything gives a sense of depth and proportion to how big those rocks are back there with those huge waterfalls. Because you know that those, those, tall, those trees are very tall, even if I put them down here like this. All right. Or you put them up here. It's just monstrous looking. That's the sense of scale that I was looking for. All right. That's All right. Up. And this is what it looked like with uh, the black frame. Of course, it looks weird with that white tape on, or the tape on the bar, but just, you can kind of envision what it would look like on the, in the frame right there. And this frame is actually more like it for for the painting. It fits the painting, echo painting. Okay. But that's what it looks like with the black frame. Cleaner look. All right. But thank you very, very much for checking it out. Looking, I'm contorting my body to throw the tape in the garbage. Um, once again, thank you very much. Let me know what you think. I love to hear your comments um, and all that good stuff. There you go. Not too many vertical paintings I do, but until next time, guys.